Bonjour guys, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to do an engineering problem. So we asked you guys last week on Instagram, what would you like to see? And a lot of you guys voted for a trust problem. And so we're going to cover a trust here. And also make sure that you guys stay tuned until the end because I have some exciting announcements. And if you guys like this video, please give us a big thumbs up so that we know that you guys like this content and so that we can create more videos like this in the future. And don't forget to subscribe and make sure you hit the bell so you get notified each time we post new videos now let's get right into it okay guys so we are giving you trust and we want to find the force in member CE so what we're going to do here is first I'm going to give you guys a hint on how to solve this problem and then you're going to pause the video attempt it and then come back and then check your answer so the reason I want to do it this way because this is the exact method I use in my courses I always provide hints before we solve the problems and a lot of my students found this method very helpful because when you attempt the problems you can see your mistakes and you can learn from your mistakes to make sure to not do those mistakes during the exam but if you just take a look at the solution you're not going to be able to see how you could have done this problem wrong so that's why it's very important for you guys to attempt problems now we're trying to find the force in member CE so the way to solve this problem is this so when you guys are ask to find only one force member in a truss always use the method of section so usually there are two methods in trusses so we have method of section method of joint we use methods of joint when we're trying to find a lot of force members but usually if we're trying to find only one force or two forces we would use method of section now method of section is just like we cut in a way where we can easily determine force ce so you're going to cut and then once you cut, the second thing to do is you're going to pick which side you want to work with. And then whatever side you work with, you have to determine the reaction force first before you can actually find the force member CE. Now, once you're at that step, then the next, the third step is you're going to pick a point in, a, in that cut, a point where if you take the moment, a lot of the force members are going to go through that point, which means the moment arm will be zero. And so when you set up the moment equation, those forces will not be in the moment equation because there's no moment arm. And the only force you would have is for CE. And then you can easily solve for, for CE. So why don't you guys try this problem? Make sure that you guys pause the video. And then once you do it, then you can come back and then check your answer. So just like we mentioned, the first thing we're going to do is cut. So this is how we're going to cut. So if we cut through here, what we're going to have is this force here. We're going to have this force. And then also we're going to have this force. Now, note guys here that I'm actually going to use this side. It's just because there's less distance and you just it might be faster. So I'm just going to use this side. Now, if you guys decide to use this side, it wouldn't matter. You guys will still end up with the same answer now another thing to keep in mind is that when we are drawing our forces when we cut we assume that our intention and so then what happens is that once we solve for the member if we get a negative that means the member it should be in compression so our first assumption is tension which is positive if we get a negative answer it means that our assumption is wrong and that the member it should be in compression then the next thing is we're going to do here is before we can set up the moment equation to solve for the member CE, we first need to find this reaction, right? So we only need to find G. We don't need to find A because we're going to work with this side of the truss. And so this is why it's important that you guys cut and then decide which side you want to work with because this way you don't need to solve for both reactions and that could save you time during the exam. Now let's take the moment at A and solve for the reaction at G. So if we do the summation of the moment at A, we're going to equal it to zero, and we're going to assume that counterclockwise is positive. So if we do that, we're going to have minus 25. So it's minus because it's going opposite of our sign convention, because the moment we're taking the moment and it's going counterclockwise, the force 25 is going down. Now we're going to have to multiply it by the moment arm, which is the, the distance that is perpendicular from the force to where we're taking the moment and that distance is going to be five feet and note guys here that this is has the unit of kips because it's the unit of force so we're going to have kips foot and then we're going to have minus 30 now we're going to look at this force here the moment arm for 30 is going to be 10 because this is the moment arm that's the distance or the the, the perpendicular distance from the force to the moment and so that's going to be 10 feet and then we're going to have plus. So we have plus because we are assuming GY is going up. 
if we get a negative answer it means that our answer assumption is wrong and that gy it should be down but we're assuming it going up and so because we're taking the moment that counterclockwise it is going the same direction as the moment and so that's why it's positive so then we're gonna have plus gy and the moment arm is going to be 10 plus 5 which is 15 and this is going to be equal to 0 and this has the unit of feet now if you guys solve for gy we're going to get 28.33 and this is going to have the unit of kips because if, if you guys take a look at the units here we have kips but this is the same thing this just has feet so here what we're going to have if we take this to the other side they're going to have the units of kips foot and then if you divide it by foot here they cancel and you're left with kips always make sure that you guys your units cancel because you could be doing small mistakes and you could get the wrong answer but if you keep track of your units and if the unit doesn't add up then you can go back and then see what you did wrong so very important for the FE exam make sure that you guys always check your units now that we found GY now let's take a look at how we can solve for the force in member CE now if you guys attempted this problem let us know in the comments below what answer did you get now let's take a look at this so we found the reaction gy which was 28.33 and this has the units of kips now we're trying to find the force in this member right so what we're going to do here is what we can do is actually take the moment at d and here is why so if i take the moment at d so note guys here that we have this force de which we don't know and we also have this force here fd right both of these forces are going to point D. So which means if we take the moment at D, these forces are not going to be in that moment equation because there is no moment arm. Moment arm is zero. They're going to point D, right? So then our moment equation will just have force CE and we can easily solve for the force CE. So let's set up our moment equation and solve for the member CE. So what we're going to do here is take the moment at D and we're going to assume counterclockwise is positive and then we're going to equal this equals to zero. Now, if we take the moment here, what we're going to have is member for CE, right? And note guys, it's going to be negative. And I'll explain that in a little bit. So we have F and then we're going to have CE. Now it's negative because note guys, we take assuming that the moment clockwise is the positive direction, right? Now, if we take a look at that moment and the force, they're going opposites of each other. So that's why we have minus FCE. And the moment arm is going to be this distance, 12. And then we're going to have minus, again, it's going to be minus for this force because this moment is going this way. This is going opposite of, of the direction of the moment. So it's going to be minus 30 kips. And then we're going to multiply it by the moment arm. Now, what's the moment arm for 30 kips? Well, we're taking the moment at D, right? And so it's going to be this distance here, which is half of 5, which is going to be 2.5. And this is going to have the units of feet. And then we're going to have plus the reaction GY, which is 28.33. And it's plus because it's going the same direction as the moment. And then times the moment arm. The moment arm for GY, you guys got to be careful with this one because it's going to be this distance here plus half of this distance. Because we're taking the moment at D, which is here. So all of this is going to be the moment arm for GY, which is 5 plus 2.5, which is going to be 7.5. And this is going to have the units of feet. And this is going to be equal to 0. Now, if you guys plug in these numbers and rearrange, so you take this force to this side, and then add these numbers, divide it by 12. If you guys plug in that in your calculator, you're going to get 11.45 or 46 kips which is about 11.5 kips. And note guys here that we got a positive answer, which means that our assumption is correct. This member here is in tension. If we got a negative answer, it means that CE is in compression. Now, if we take a look at the multiple choice, the answer is going to be B. If you guys really like this problem, let us know in the comments below because actually my team who created this problem and they thought it was going to really help you guys. So if you liked it, let us know so that they create more problems like this for you guys in the future. So that's it guys for today's video. Now, if you guys like this video, please let us know in the comments below so that we make more videos like this in the future. And then also, if you're preparing for your FE exam, make sure that you guys check out our courses that are helping so many people pass the FE exam. And don't forget to sign up on our website at engineer.com for some more tips and tricks on how to pass the FE. 
Now let's talk about the exciting announcement. So a lot of you guys have been asking about the afternoon course. And so by the end of this week, we're going to launch part of it. Now make sure that you guys check out your emails this week because we'll be sending out emails just giving more information about what's going to be on the course and the pricing as well. So the reason why we're launching only part of the course is because the whole process really takes me time. So finding the right content, finding content that's going to be relevant to the FE exam and then also creating the problems and then filming the concept and a lot of problems and then the editing so the whole process takes time and I don't want to rush it because I want to provide a good quality course, a course that's going to help you guys pass your FE exam. Now, if you guys get the course when we launch it, you will get it at a discounted price. And also, as we add more and more problems to the course, you guys will have access to all future videos with no additional fee. But as we add the problems, we will be increasing the price. So this will actually be a really good time to get the course. Now, if you guys have any questions about the course, just let us know in the comments below or you can email us at hello at engineer.com. Now, if you guys like this video, please give us a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure you hit the bell so you get notified each time we post new videos. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great productive week and I will see you soon. À la prochaine.